What's going on everybody? We are back. We're finally doing something new. I'm getting kind of sick and tired of doing the other crap we were doing. So this video we're going to start talking about JWTs. JSON Web Tokens. This is how you basically will do logging in and yeah that's pretty much it. So that's how we're going to log in with an API. So pretty much how it's going to work, we'll make a request to the server, we'll give them our username and password, the server will give us a token in response, and a token you can just think of it as a sequence of characters, and that's what we're going to include with our API request so that we can prevent just anybody from using our API. Now you might still have public facing API endpoints and that's totally fine, but you might want to have some that are private or customize something for an individual user. So we'll start with the back end and then we're going to worry about the front end. So we will have to build the capabilities on the back end to log in and get that token. And then on the front end, we will build that login page. The tool we're going to be using is called Simple JWT at Django REST Framework Simple JWT read the docs.io. So let's just go ahead and install this. What we'll do is we will open up our back end code. You can close out of your server and do it in that terminal, or if you're keeping that running, you can just do it in another one. Just make sure you have the virtual environment activated. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to say pip install Django REST framework dash simple JWT. And as with all of our backend stuff, we go into this in much more detail in my backend Python course. So def check that out. If interested, you can check that out at codebreakthrough.com slash backend dash Python. All right enough advertising. Once you have that installed, we can open our settings and we just need to define a few things in here. I don't think the location is significant. I'm just going to define it after this middleware section. And we're going to say rest framework in all caps with an underscore and set this equal to a dictionary with default authentication classes, colon. And in here, we're going to have parentheses with a single value and put a comma there at the end if any were added rest framework simple jwt dot authentication dot capital jwt authentication so yeah if you don't have this memorized by the end of the video then you're weak you should probably just call it quits man i don't know if you're going to make it as a developer now what we can do is we can make a new path in our urls to get a token so i'm going to define this Hmm, I don't know, probably, yeah, just first thing. Path, and the path here is going to be slash API slash token. And we're going to import some stuff. So we'll say from rest underscore framework underscore simple JWT dot views import token obtain pair view and token refresh view. Now we can use these views, token obtain pair view, and this is going to be invoked. So add parentheses here and we can give it a name. We'll say token obtain pair. And we'll understand better what all this is in a minute. So just follow along for now. We're gonna have another path, the second path to refresh the token. API slash, oh, forgot that slash at the beginning. Do we want the slash at the beginning? No, no slash at the beginning here token slash refresh slash at the end there we go and then this is going to be token refresh view also invoked and name is going to be token refresh so basically we're adding two new url paths to get a token and refresh a token so let's go try this path in our browser see what happens and oh i totally forgot to close out of this wow this is incredible uh, okay where was i Let's close out of these here and we're going to go to API slash token. And then we might need to restart our server or check if we have any problems. View must be a callable. Yeah, so we need to pass in dot as view. My bad. All right, now let's just restart our server here. All right, it seems to be working. Let's go ahead and refresh this. You'll see we have a username and password that we can pass in, make a post request, and we get a refresh and access token. Where did this username and password come from? It's the same user that you use to log in in the admin site. So localhost8000 slash admin, we define this 
user inside of the users table with create super user in the terminal from an earlier video. So if you don't remember how to do that, you can just say python manage.py create super user. And that'll go through the process of creating your first user, which can then be used to log in to get a token. So we have an access token and a refresh token. We will include this access token with our requests to restricted API endpoints. What exactly do I mean by restricted API endpoints? Well, we want ones that users have to be authenticated to access. So in earlier videos, we built a customers page that we could list out our different customers and get information about them. What I wanna do now is you have to log in to access that page and interact with the customers. So let's go ahead and restrict those API endpoints so that not anybody can use them. So here we are in our views.py. And we're going to use a new decorator similar to how we have this here. So it's going to look a little bit like this, just a bit different, but it's another decorator. So we can just add it to this rest framework decorators import permission underscore classes. And then we're going to have another import from rest underscore framework dot permissions import is authenticated. The decorator is going to look like this. We'll say at permission underscore classes and pass in similar to API view in a list where the only thing in here is going to be is authenticated. So that's what we're going to do. And we're going to put that on any of the functions in this file that we want to require people to log in with. Now I have one really important thing that I wanted to call out. So make sure you're paying attention. This API view needs to go above the permission classes. Otherwise, it's just going to be ignored. So the API view is going to go on the top. Now we can go test this from our browser. And now we can go to any of these API endpoints. So we'll say API slash customers. Authentication credentials were not provided. Uh-oh. So I actually need to take the data here and include it with our request. Now it's not really easy to do inside of this user interface. So we'll need a different way of trying this out. So you have two options here. You can make the request from JavaScript, like we're building our front end. This is kind of jumping to the next stage where we're moving over to the front end. I personally prefer to kind of make sure our back end is working the way we expect. So I'm going to grab an API testing tool called Postman. Postman is going to allow us to include a lot of extra stuff with our request. So we'll download that and try out our request there first. I'll just search Postman download because I also have an online version which isn't going to work for a local host. So you'll definitely wanna make sure you get the download version. So Postman is always changing. They say a new release every week, but it all does pretty much the same thing. So if you're not on the same exact version, it's going to be fine. So I'm going to open my existing Postman. It's gonna look something like this and you can organize things into collections and also workspaces. I'm just in like a scratch pad version. I don't, I don't really keep track of all my API endpoints, but that would be a great way to test your APIs for, for example, regression testing, or just to make sure things are working the way expected, just to have a good list of all those different API endpoints that you can call really quickly. So what we're going to do is just type out localhost 8000 slash API slash customers, hit enter, it says authentication credentials were not provided, exactly what we're expecting. But now we can go into authorization and what we're going to want to select from this list is bearer token and we're going to paste our token in here. So paste that value there. Now when we hit send, you should get, oh, okay, I got wrecked. So token is invalid or expired. I just took too long making this video. Not a problem though. So I'm just gonna go in, log in again, get a new access token. So we'll copy. I just hate how this is presented here. So I'm just gonna copy this value, paste that thing right here, hit send, and there we go. We're able to access that API endpoint. We will visit our other API endpoint, which was API slash token slash refresh. And here it says method get not allowed, but we can make a post request here by pasting in a refresh token and hitting post. This will give us a new access token. So basically this refresh token allows us to get a new access token. So our original access token expires frequently, but we don't have to log in again with our username and password. We can just keep track of that refresh token and use it as needed. This will basically give you access for a period of time. Let's say it's 30 minutes, but that 
30 minutes will restart if you're still active because we're going to use that refresh token. So if you go away from your computer for 30 minutes, then you'll be kicked off because at that point your access token and your refresh token will expire. That's why when you're on a banking app, for example, you can keep using that app as long as you want without having to log in again. But if you're inactive for a certain length of time, it'll kick you off. That's all I got in this episode, which is all about setting up the back end for this. In the next video, we're going to talk about the front end. So looking forward to that. I'll see you then. Be sure to sub. Peace out. <laughs>